tell a woman <clears throat> before I begin this video. I'm gonna give all praise on and glory to Yahweh. Bashim, how much I Bashim Rakhakwadash. Also as well, uh double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that I'll continue to rule for everyone to this very day. That is our feet in the flock through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And also as well, uh, likewise Shalom and much due honors to the whole feet like this. Continuing to labor in this work and uh, continuing to, uh, you know, plow and and spread this gospel to the other members of the whole elect that are continuing to uh, teach this word in its entirety and all faith, truth, and sincerity, and all charity. Now, um, you know, it's going to be a video that's centered around an Israelite group that has been gone for a year. You know, they've been gone for 365 days or more. And now they're starting to pop back up. Or this group is starting to pop back up by the name of uh, Tried and Refined. Okay, because before they was known as Israel Tried and Refined. But, you know, I guess the nation of Israel doesn't matter anymore. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Because... Here it is, man. You know, <laughs> you know, if you don't know about them, you know, this is a group that um, broke away from the Chicago camp. And um, I believe I believe uh, some of Detroit, some of the D Detroit guys that uh, broke away um, from the body are, are in this as well. You know, I'm not too sure, you know, because, again, you know, this, it's been a whole year since they went out and did the work. OK. And, you know, man, this goes to show you the level of pride that's on guys that who know about the truth. OK, just because, you know, you're a Hebrew Israelite and you have some sort of understanding or some sort of or, or not even that, you know, it doesn't matter if, you know, even if you know you're Hebrew Israelite and and you may know some scriptures, but at the end of the day. If you're in the mode of taking a whole year off and then coming back to do the work, man, the Lord does not have pleasure in that, man. Okay? Did Yahweh Shah take a whole year off from doing the work? Did any of the apostles of old take a year off from doing the work? Did any of the men of the Lord ever take years off from doing the work? And, and the answer to that is, of course, no. Okay? So what makes you any better than Yahweh Shai? Or any of the apostles of old. And even the uh, apostles and elders of Great Millstone. What makes you any better than, than them? Okay. What, what, what warns you to have a seat in the kingdom? And, you know, in your mind, you're thinking that you can take a whole year off because you're good. Okay. Because none of us is, is, is good to go yet, man. None of us is is even of assured of, of salvation, man. That's why we're doing this to our best ability. By doing the work and try to do the work every single day, you know, try to put out videos and lessons to edify the body and to go out on the highways and byways. See, here's the thing. And, and then, you know, if you go into the comment boards of these guys. Right. And if you go over here, let me see if I can pull them up real quick. Yeah. So these guys right here. Right. <clears throat> so here it is, you know. These guys, you know, the, if you look on the comment board, I'm not going to bring it up because there's nothing but madness in there. Um, you know, we have a brother from GMS that, that hopped on the comment board and, you know, called him out. But their excuse is that, that, uh, you know, what, what, what is the definition of doing the work? Okay. And the brother told him, said, look, you're supposed to be doing lessons to edify the body and uploading your videos on YouTube. Why? Because, and the reason why is because the internet was set up for that same purpose. OK, even the Lord Yahweh Shai spoke, spoke of the Internet. OK, Lord's will, I get that. OK. So doing the work is, is continuing to put out lessons and edification on a daily basis. All right. I believe um, the apostles brought that out. And um, in one of the, the live shows is that, you know, this is supposed to be a daily exhortation. That's why the apostle Elder Gabar, again, 
Um, you know, I did a video entitled that, The Daily Edification, The Daily Exhortation, and the Apostle Elder Gabar named this channel that way. There's a reason why he named that channel, Daily Edification and Daily Exhortation, because it's a daily thing, okay? Just like the men of old who've done this work and Yahweh Shai, okay? So, and also as well, you know what? Throughout 365 days, right? What are you doing in those 365 days? Okay? You had to be doing something. All right? Because there's no record or anything of or what, what your works are during that whole entire year. So what are you doing? Okay? And we already know the answer to that. You're, you're in the world. Okay? There's no need to do a deep analysis or a deep breakdown on what these guys have done over a whole entire year. Okay, they've been slacking off. They've been in the world, living it up in Babylon, and now that tensions are growing again. And now that it, all hell is starting to break loose, and now you're starting to see um, everything that's that's spiraling out of control. Now they feel within themselves to come back out and do the work. Now that they're seeing these things, and and they know what they're doing. All right, but I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the precepts, man. I'm not gonna dwell on this too long. But even our Lord, Yahweh Shai, even spoke about doing the work, man. Okay. And this is what he said. This is Luke chapter 9. This is at verse 62. It says, And Yahweh Shai said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom. All right. So, uh, <clears throat> so in other words, man, look, you put your hand to the plow and you're looking back, you know. You're basically looking back into what? Into the world. Okay, and and guess what? And guess what he said? He says you're you're not fit for the kingdom. You're you are not fitted, and you're not meat for for the kingdom, man. Okay, and these guys tried and refined. Uh, they're they're not meat, man. They're not meat for the kingdom. Okay, they're not ready. They're not <laughs> really. They don't deserve the kingdom, man. Why? Because you took a break for a whole year, and you have the mentality of taking breaks. Okay, so guess what? What makes you think that you're fit to rule a kingdom? And if you leave your kingdom for a whole year, what do you think is going to happen to that kingdom? What do you think is going to happen to that rulership if you're gone for a whole year and you leave it unten unattended? It's going to break down and fall through. Okay, that's why. You, that's another reason why Yahweh said that that um, him that looking his hand to the he put his hand to the plow looking back is not fit for the kingdom. Okay. Because if you take your hand out of the plow, what makes what makes what you think what happen? What do you think is gonna happen if you if you uh, leave your kingdom for for a whole year or, or more? Okay, it's gonna decay, and the scriptures speak about that too. Okay, All right, let me see if I can get it real quick. Uh, let's see if I can roughly paraphrase it and find it. Here it is. There's a book of Hebrews, chapter 10. And I'm, let's see. I want to hold another scripture on deck while I get that. Uh, this is Hebrews chapter 10. And um let's see, let's go down just a little bit. <clears throat> let's see, slack you. Lost my place for a moment. Right, it's the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. This is at verse 38. All right, it should be yeah, the last two verses. Go back to it. Yep, Hebrews, chapter 10, verse uh, 38. It says, now the just shall live by faith. Okay. And uh, by the way, faith is not just in word, it's in action. Okay. So what happened to your faith? All right. It, 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 you lost it. 
okay? Let's call it like it is. They lost it, man. Okay? They don't have faith that this place is going to be destroyed. If they did, then they would have still been been out there for the whole year. You know, even though the doctrine, their doctrine that their teacher's off, all right, they still would have been out there, man, if they really believe. But, you know, the what, what you teach is really is a, a testament of what you do, okay? If you don't have the correct doctrine, then more than likely you're gonna you're gonna um, you're gonna die out. You're gonna dry out, and you're gonna die. Okay. Now, uh, reading on, it says, uh, "But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in them." Okay. So how about Shemuel Shai has no pleasure in people that draw back? Okay. Verse 39, but we are not of them who draw back into perdition, right? Perdition means destruction. So that's what they did. They drew back into destruction because going back into the world is basically placing yourself back on the target list, so to speak. Okay. You're, you're automatically put on the list to be destroyed by Yahweh by Shemuel Shai if you go back into the world. All right. You once had mercy, his mercy, but guess what? After, um, uh, after going back into the into the world, you know you lose that mercy. Okay, because it shows who you really are. It shows your character when you do that. Okay, you don't have any any sort of integrity. Okay. Uh, right. It says, but uh, of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Okay. Now I'm gonna move on from there. I'm gonna try to get through this as quick as possible. Getting to that time where I go back in the work. Um, this is the book of Luke, chapter uh, 14. This is at verse uh, verse 28. It says, For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, where he has sufficient to finish it? Less happily, after he had laid the foundation, right? And they did lay the foundation, right? They, they got their establishment off, off the ground, so to speak, right? But guess what? And is not able to finish it. All that behold it began to mock him. Okay, and that's what's happening now. We're, we're, now they're being mocked for not being out there. Why? Because you have people on the comment board saying, you know, where y'all been? Where y'all been? You know, where you been at? You know, you know what I mean. So that's a, that's a form of uh, the ones who have seen your works. All right, and um, and they're on the comment boards. You know, inquiring where you been? What you been doing for the whole year? All right. So now everybody that's going on the comment board and seeing you guys now, they're starting to mock you in a way. Okay? Because you've been gone for a whole year. <laughs> and then, you know, the people on the comment board are lost, man. All right? Because they're, uh, you know, they're cheering them up, you know, cheering them on and, you know, giving them shallow worms and this and that. You know, again, man, the Lord's not dealing with that group, man. The Lord's not dealing with them, guys. Okay. Uh, this is the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, chapter ten, verse eighteen. It says, "By much slothfulness the building decayeth, and through idleness of the hands the house droppeth through." See that? So slothfulness, all right. By much slothfulness, <laughs> taking a whole year or more off, the building decayeth. Like I mentioned before, if you, if you take your hand off the plow and you leave for X amount of time. You're not fit for the kingdom, man. All right? You're not fit to rule. You're not fit to be in rulership. Okay? You're not fit to be a king. It says, and through the idleness of the hands, the house dropped it through. So they started to build a house, right? And it decayed. And it rusted. And it rotted away. All right? Right now, there's one last scripture I want to grab. Let's lock you. All right, it's the book of uh, Sirach, chapter 33, and uh, verse 26. It says, A yoke and a collar do bow the neck, so are the tortures and torments for an evil servant. Send him to labor, that he be not idle. Okay? So you're supposed to be laboring. You're supposed to keep yourself busy in this truth, in this ministry. And here's the, here's the reason why. For idleness teacheth much evil. So in a whole year, 
you did not teach this word. You did not do the work. Okay. And yes, you did not do the work. Stop denying it. All right. For a whole year. And, um, and that has taught them much evil. Okay. So, because again, what, what have they done throughout the whole year through a span of 365 days? What have they done? Okay. And I can tell you now that they, they've done absolutely nothing. Just been out there in the world. Simple as all hell, man. Okay. But I'm going in off on that note. You know, again, man, you know, this is an example on what not to do. When you're when you come into the truth, when you realize who you really are, your nationality, and you learn of your how about Shamil Shai. This is something that you don't do. All right. And um, Lord's will, the spirit of slothfulness and idleness does not leak over to the brothers that believe as well and lord's will is edifying to the, the brothers that believe in this truth that's continuing to watch and listen uh much do honors to you and also uh you know shalom and you know much honor is peace and safety to uh the few sisters the very few sisters that believe in this truth and uh listening and tuning in in the background and um and as always want to give all praise on and glory to you how about shemiel shai about shemiel kakwadash the honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone at Ruel and also Shalom. Peace and safety. Salutations to the whole elect this labor and this work. Give me your diligence to make your calling and lecture sure in faith, in truth and sincerity, in all charity. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom.